I hope by now you have figured out three important things that men, grown men who call their fathers daddy do so I to hush puppies a jar of sweet tea and a Krispy Kreme donut. And the three most important words in the English language are anybody but Duke. So. We can instantly separate the Chapel Hill wheat from the Duke chaff on that one. Uh, tonight's session is called 10 Reasons to Commit Suicide or Have a Strong Drink After as we begin to turn to the state of our national economy. Now, tonight's session, according to the original agenda, as some of you may know, was originally intended to be an election year focused summit. Uh, and we invited both delegates from the Obama and the McCain campaigns to submit their platforms and send representatives to talk to you. If you haven't seen them already in the lobby at the hotel, I'd urge you to check them out. The Obama campaign responded to us with a long statement that addresses arts education, the NEA, cultural diplomacy, international exchange, artist health care, and tax propositions for artists. Yeah. <laughs> and even though the, uh, the McCain campaign subsequently has submitted a, a paragraph basically addressing the importance of arts education, at the time when we got into our final planning mode, we had yet to hear back from that campaign and with Mississippi about to happen, we thought one debate where one podium was empty was probably enough. So, <laughs> given, given, boy, I'm gonna get in such trouble, aren't I? Given also as well the state of the national economy, we decided to seize the moment and really pursue in greater depth the discussion that was foremost on everyone's mind. What is going on in the national economy? What are the conditions that have contributed to where we are now? And as grant makers and as servants to the not-for-profit art sector, how should we be thinking about solutions and what we can do in this difficult time? We are graced tonight to have a wonderful, fantastic, brilliant economist expert who's going to give us all the answers. But in order to introduce him, let me turn the podium over to Bob Lynch, a man many of you know, and if you don't, you well should. For 12 years, he led the National Association of Local Arts Councils, which subsequently merged in 12 more since. He's led Americans for the Arts. What his bio will not tell you is that after one beef eater martini, very dry with three olives, he does a mean Jerry Lee Lewis and can pound the keyboard with the great balls of fire you'll never forget. Here he is, Bob Lynch. Thank you, Ben. Um, actually, this year of tracking the presidential campaigns has been fascinating and uh, had a chance to meet several of them along the way. Uh, and it's going to get more and more interesting right up to the very end, as you can see from the statements. But I'm really pleased to be asked to introduce our plenary topic and speaker tonight. I can think um, of no conceptual art piece um, or shock theater production um, with a more bizarre or controversial theme than tonight's presentation titled, The State of the U.S. Economy. Uh, this plot has taken some dramatic and unprecedented uh, twists just while we've been here at GIA. Um, and for me personally, uh, last Monday, it got ugly. Uh, Americans for the Arts held its annual budget board meeting in New York City last Monday. Um, three months earlier, I had been delighted to line up um, a really exciting glitter, glittery space for this meeting um, for this, my 2009 budget presentation uh, where it had to be uh, voted for approval. Through the generosity of a board member who's a senior director at NASDAQ, uh, <laughs> we had the meeting in uh, high-tech headquarters uh, in Times Square of the NASDAQ Stock Exchange uh, on one of the worst days in American financial history. <laughs> And worse for that, we were all uh, in one uh, room with glass walls all the way around. <laughs> On the other side were people running around crazily and uh, two foot high giant jumbotron um, with stock price quotes. <laughs> and so uh, as I presented my, I thought, conservative, uh, 2009 budget, there behind me on a two story high, bright, clear digital screen, the stock market was crashing um, in huge visible numbers. So um, it, is, it has been really good seeing so many of you at this meeting, as I won't be traveling very much uh, in the coming year. Yes, yes, yes. Um, call me. Uh, so <laughs> no individual makes 
an art's decision because of economic impact. No artist is motivated to create work because of economic trend data reports, nor should they. Yet we all know that the economy affects every part um, of our arts world. The amount of resources that, uh, that we, you, have to give away, whether it's a foundation or a business or an individual or government, the amount of money that we as individuals can spend, um, whether we're, we're trying to enjoy the arts or acquire the arts or make the arts, and the amount that our schools have uh, to spend on arts education. But um, the economy is, as we have seen, not a precise science. It's more of an art form, in a way. Um, the other night, uh, in a partnership that we have, a strategic alliance that we're trying to build with the National Association of Business Economists, um, I, I, and we were giving an, an award to a young student who is both an economist student and also um, a violinist uh, here at Emory University, actually. Um, Jeffrey Sachs was the economist who gave the speech. And I expected a nice, quiet group listening. Uh, and when he started to talk about government regulation and taxes as part of the solution for the future, his idea, a riot broke out in the, in the room with economists taking different sides. Fascinating. Um, kind of like arts board meetings that I've seen in the past. <laughs> so um, policymakers in general, public and private, are often very influenced by um, financial and human numbers associated with any expenditure that they make, including the arts. Uh, Mayor Shirley Franklin, for example, uh, referenced figures um, yesterday for economic impact of Atlanta, the number of jobs, the uh, total economic impact figures, the number of dollars back in government taxes. So that's why the economy is the number one issue for, uh, in this year's election, local, state, federal elected official campaigns, and for the presidential candidates right now. But interestingly, you know, and maybe sadly, it always is. If you remember, um, it's the economy, stupid, um, was the slogan during Bill Clinton's campaigns, both of them. We're lucky tonight because Jer Jeremy Nowak knows money and economy from several different points of view. He's the president and CEO of the Redevelopment Fund, which uh, he founded in 1985. He manages $500 million in development assets. Um, one, the company is one of the leading community development organizations in the, in the nation, and it specializes, it uses that financing for things like affordable housing, uh, for a Fresh Foods Financing Initiative, uh, which is 50 food markets um, in underserved urban and rural areas. He served um, on the Consumer Advisory uh, Board of the Federal Reserve uh, Bank. Uh, he's chaired the uh, board of the Industry T Trade Association, um, the uh, National Community Capital Association. And in January of 2008, he began a three-year term on the board of the Federal Reserve Bank of Philadelphia. He knows the nonprofit world, too. Uh, chairman of the board of uh, Mastery Cluster Schools, a network of four inner-city cluster um, high schools in Philadelphia. He chairs Alex's Lemonade Stand which at first I thought was a small business that he was using as a hedge in case the, the day gig. But in fact, it's a, it's a charity that raises money for pediatric um, cancer research. Uh, PhD from the New School of Social Research, a fellow at the Aspen Institute um, Entre Entrepreneurial Leaders in Education. Uh, many papers on topics that relate to some of the th topics that we've had here over the last couple of days. The role of development finance in older industrial cities, for example. Or the role of development finance in um, urban environmental reclamation. In 1994, the city of Philadelphia gave the Philadelphia Award to him, the highest civic honor in the city. So here to help us understand this theater we know as the national economy, Jeremy Nowak.